I'm just asking you a question. There's no right or wrong answer. In your own words, why do you need to create friends that don't tell you anything? What do you have to prove right when you do that? That I'm alive. That what? I'm alive. That you're alive? Yeah. So when people exclude information, you're alive? It's just I'm not understanding it. Okay, that's why most people get yeah, stuck on this. Okay. okay. Why did you need to create the situation? <clears throat> if you bought in, you signed the consent form, we're working together, yeah. you bought into the fact that you create everything mm -hmm. to prove your story. Mm -hmm. Why did you create this situation that your friends didn't tell you? What's the need? Why do you need to create being angry and being left out? Because I need the information. I need to know. Okay, so I need to know why. Yeah. I need to know why for what reason? Just I need to know? You just yeah, need, just to, need know? to know? Yeah. Okay. So she has a need to know. But if you have a need to know, why would you create a situation where you don't get to know? She's just creating a situation with her parents because they excluded her at a young age and everything is mother, father, child. Well, it links back to that, but I think it's what you said before. Without information, I'm worthless. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay? So you, you, you need to know in order to be of worth. Mm. And I will have to work on perfecting that. I know that this one, it's and that's a very common in practice, and I have to work a lot with it. I'm just trying to find a way to say it. Okay, so now we have reached the child. In the model, when you have established these first three steps, the client now has reached awareness. What are the three things of the Band-Aid? Awareness, integration, and do it different. So this is actual behavior. If you can get a client to become aware right here, that their whole value system, their whole self-worth is linked to knowledge that is a big piece of awareness. She's an aware person. We've been studying this. Obviously, she does inner work. But many people do not, and they don't have a clue. Last night, one of my clients texted me. And she is an older woman, and her parents have been taking care of her for many, many years. And um, she's now in a hospital getting some help. And she said, um, I guess in one of the sessions we had talked about being alienated from the family. And the way that I saw what she told me was as oh, this is an opportunity for her to get out of the family dynamic and be the baby and actually be allowed to be an adult. So her mother wrote her this thing saying, I love you, but I really just can't anymore. Um, sorry, but I totally can't handle these confrontations. It's not because I don't love you. It would be wonderful to talk and, you know, and not be hurtful. I just can't fix this anymore. I'm sorry if my actions have led you to believe that I am responsible for fixing your life. You are. I love you and I know that you can. That's her mom. So she writes to me, of course. I write her back. The positive that I can think of, and probably not immediately, is that you will take charge of your life now that you're being given permission to. 
And then she wrote back, thank you for the message. I like the meaning, the reference. I didn't think of her letting go and trying to fix my life as a good thing. So when a client can become aware that the parent stepping out, not paying the bills, not catering to her every illness or whim, she now can step in to her life. So when we can bring awareness to a, a client, sometimes that's all we have to do. Sometimes that's when they leave. Sometimes that'll last them the next years until they have another skinny cap. But understanding and having an awareness that your validation and your self-worth is linked to information. And then you start seeing it in your day-to-day -day life. It's like this light bulb goes off and go, wow, I really need information. Wow, I really need to be first. Wow, I can't just sit still if I don't have the answer. Wow, I don't maybe need to watch the results of the midterm elections. Maybe I can not watch the news today. Maybe I just listen to a conversation that my friends are talking about instead of me having anything to chime in with. Those are versions of behavior change. It does not mean that the wound is gone. The wound doesn't go away. Remember Chiron? The wound does not heal. That is what you were based on. That is your story. That is your narrative. If you tried to heal that wound, you would dismantle every cell, the egg and the sperm, and you would die, which is what he did. Then he went into spirit form. So we cannot sit here and think that that isn't going to drive our behavior and our thoughts and our motivations. The wound is the wound. But the more you become aware of it, I am only worthy if my mother likes what I'm doing, or in my case, what, I'm, what I look like for a while, that was a big one for me, then I can become aware and make decisions, hopefully not self-destructive decisions, but rather decisions that benefit me. So does everyone understand that this is to really get clear about what the client's true, true issue is? It is directly three questions that will get you to this in a second. You do the triad, tell me about your mother and father, good and bad. Tell me about your childhood, zero to seven. You already have the buckets. The shadow is there. If you want to ask specific questions about conception, pregnancy, birth, and zero to seven, you can, but you don't have to because the minute that you ask them what's going on, she wasn't planning on that. She just shared a thing. We got to the core wound. Does this make sense? I know it's a lot, but the more we practice it, practice it, practice it, I'm telling you, it becomes second nature. It's just what I do in practice. And then eventually, you don't need to ask all the questions in that order. You listen to a client, and you go, oh. So I had a client last, not this weekend, but the weekend before last. I think I might have told you about him. He wants to move to California. And we've been working together for years. And he's like, Francis, my friends must think I'm so crazy because I go visit California every few months and I never move, and I stay in New York, and I go and I come back, and I go and I come back, and I go and I come back, and I said, oh, there's a story here. Somewhere this guy came and went back, had to do a back 
before he could go forward. So we were talking, and at that moment, what I decided was to do the numerology, boom, 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 quickly on the paper while he was talking to me. And I said, what happened in, I don't know, 83 or something? He's like, what grade are you in? And I said, it's third grade. He's like, oh, I was held back. I said, what? He goes, yeah, yeah, I was held back in second grade. I had to do second grade again. And then I moved for third grade. And I struggled a little because it was a new thing. So I said, so can you now understand why you go from California to New York? It's been three years, third grade, and now you're slowly starting to get your things in order to move next year because you're following the pattern of what you did in second and third grade. He couldn't believe it. He was blown away. Blown away. And then he wants to take a sabbatical. So a sabbatical, when you're like a college professor, you get a year to do research or whatnot. But he doesn't really have the money to do this. And I get a gut feeling that his mother's dying. She's in her late 90s, and she's going to leave him some money. I said, you know, I'm getting this gut feeling that, that that's going to happen. He's like, yeah, I've gotten that too, but that's so bad. And I said, why? I mean, my mom leaving and, and, and leaves me money, and I go and take a year off. And I said, money is currency where you're being paid to do something, right? You're going to pay me at the end of my session, I said to him. And this man, what he does for a living is he helps people cross over when they're on their deathbed. I said, do you get paid? He's like, yeah. I said, so why is it any different if you help your mom cross over and she pays you with an inheritance? <gasps> Francis, oh my God! What a way to reframe that! So, that's what you're going to start hearing. And you're going to put those things together. So, we're going to do, well, Tuesday I won't be here. What I might do is record this, although I want to do this with you, but maybe what we'll do is we'll have them download the, the workbook. It's on my website and do the steps. Mm -hmm. um, so steps four through seven. Seven is optional. I'll teach you a little bit about seven. I have a book coming out rather quickly. Um, I'm gonna just, I decided to just put that book on Amazon and not go through any publishing ordeal. And it's just a book of a bunch of ceremony and ritual. It's called Witch Bitch. Um, <laughs> And it's just like fun things, but ceremony and ritual is how we bypass the subconscious. So when we do different things, that's why a lot of people burn their notes in the full moon ceremony and things like that, and they do drum circles, all of that is ritual and ceremony. Just like Thanksgiving is ritual and ceremony. The subconscious learns to sort of rewrite itself that way. So that will be optional because that's something that not everyone believes in. But we'll probably download for Tuesday the workbook from the website. So the website is dryahia.com. <coughs> Go to the podcast. And when you go to the podcast, it's going to say click here or workbook here. Now here is not very bright. But the minute you say here, click it. I gotta fix that. Download that. I can't think it's more than 10 or 11 pages. It's going to explain all of the steps, and then in the back there's a cheat sheet of a short synopsis of the seven steps. So maybe on Tuesday, I'll see, I'll talk to Mr. Pachi and see what's going on, and, and we'll. Um, 
I don't know what time the biopsy is, but I have, the likelihood is that I will not be here um, until after. I can always, of course, record later when I come back. If they're not sedating me, I don't know. Um, but maybe we'll just have you do that in class so you guys can start practicing. Um, and you can do the model, even if you can just start with the first three steps. So I'll talk to her so we have a plan. And then Thursday, I will explain steps four through seven. This is how you help people make change. This is when you understand that person and how they have unmet needs and how you teach them to meet their own needs. So a child, even if they're 80 years old, a child in this model doesn't meet their own needs. An adult, even if they're 12, learns to meet their needs. And that's our goal, is that our clients can get out of this dysfunctional alliance, get into this or this, and meet their own needs. And oftentimes, it's simply just asking for what they need, or giving the inner child what it's asking for. So these steps will teach you how to do that. Okay? Any questions? I know yes. it's a lot. What, is, what does it say right there? Like after integra integration? Uh, oh, okay. hashtag do it differently. Um, can can um going back to the Venus and the Mars? Can a female like can it be the opposite? Absolutely, and it's very common that it's the opposite that women are actually working much more from their male than their Venus. That's a big problem we're having, and we see it on the diseases that we get on the side of the body. I will bring, not next week, because I just moved and I have to find it, but in this biodecoding uh, class, the gentleman who created this. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> um, this